People who apply for funding to the Medical Research Council have to have their applications assessed and one of the main ways we do that is through four research boards. At the moment we meet three times a year so we would have maybe, at my board we have maybe 60 or 70 applications to consider at each board meeting. My job is perhaps to prompt them about um, MRC policy to say, or, or strategy rather, you know, if we've made a strategic decision that we're going to particularly focus on one area of medicine over another, then I perhaps might need to remind them of that. Throughout the rest of the year, in between board meetings, that's when the hard work happens because when an application comes in from, a, um, uh, from a, a, an academic at a university, we have to process it, so we have to check that they're eligible, we have to get it onto our systems, we've got to make sure they've included all the right pieces of information. Then we need to get the application refereed. So there's quite a lot of toing and throwing there between us and, and the academic community. I did chemistry GCSE at school, in fact I did three sciences. And then I went and did A-levels in chemistry, physics and double maths. Chemistry was the one that I liked best. And so when it came to going to university, I think I settled on chemistry because I enjoyed the subject, but also it opened up a lot of opportunities for me. I did my chemistry degree at Bristol. Um, in my final year, I did an undergraduate research project in um, one of the research labs there. And I stayed in that lab then to do a PhD. Mine was in analytical chemistry and I was looking at um, fats in foods and how we can analyse them better and understand them better. Uh, when I finished my, my PhD, I um, went to uh, work in industry for a couple of years. I worked in the flavour industry uh, where I was analysing flavours, um, helping people make new flavours for foods and that sort of thing. Um, and, but after a couple of years I realised that um, although I was enjoying that I wasn't really doing enough research, it was more sort of just analysis. So I decided to go back to um, academia I went and did a postdoc, again back at Bristol with people that I'd worked with before and then when I was there I was awarded a, a personal research fellowship from the Royal Society. So I had um, four years to you know, carve out my own research career. I enjoyed the lab work, I enjoyed the lifestyle but I don't think I was enjoying it enough to put the hours in that you need to succeed in academia which made me think that it probably wasn't for me. So I started looking at other options. Um, so then I spent four years working in the Environment Agency doing science communications. I was responsible for their technical publishing programme, um, for making sure that, um, that all of our scientific reports got published properly. So I was involved in writing those summaries, in, in um, producing all the reports, and in how we communicated them to the media, to stakeholders or whatever. And then after four years, I decided it was time for a change again. And I saw this job advertised in, for the Medical Research Council. And again, it was, I just thought, well, that looks quite interesting. I could probably have a stab at that. Why don't I apply and see what happens? And here I am. Like most organisations, we use email a lot. Um, but I really try to use the phone a lot as well, because I think um, particularly for sort of, sort of everyday quick queries that I've got for people, um, you know, if I'm talking to the admin teams or whatever, then a lot of the time it can be sorted out over the phone. As well as your scientific training, you need communication skills, which is written and oral and, and all of those sort of in-between things that, that aren't always written down. You've got to be a people person. I think you've got to be happy to talk to people because it's a lot of, a lot of it is bringing people together. And, and then there's quite an analytical part of it, which is looking at the processes and thinking, well, how do we do these at the moment? Could we do them better? Um, and then there's, there's a sort of a management role to sort of keep tabs on a lot of different things that are happening. The job's interesting. I've got something kind of new to do every day, which I like. Um, the people are nice. The other thing that's quite important for me is that the MRC are a flexible employer. That's really important for me to get work-life balance. There are options to go part-time, to do compressed hours. All those things are really important. I think for everybody, but particularly for me.